going live right now in three two one what kind of we're gonna do clapping so are we live it's supposed to be clapping but I don't, I don't think it's oh there it is 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 by the way, do you have the link? Does that link take you to the producer view where you can see all the comments and stuff? So, so when I logged in, it brought me straight to producer view. Nice. Yeah, I sent you the producer link. Yeah. Good. Good stuff. All right. So you can see all the comments. We're live on. Wait. So where do those comments come in from? Chat? Shit. I see chat. Uh... The only comments I ever see come in are through, are through Facebook, so there's that. That's true. And I did not give you the link to it. How do I share this? No, I got it up. It's on. You tagged me in it, so I just shared it to my timeline. A preview link? <coughs> Click on the link below to view what your viewers see. Manage on second device. Ooh, sweet. All right. Now you're also Facebook now. Cool. Now you can sweet. see all the... Facebook statistics as well. And we're live. Cool. No idea cool. Where, where to look for that, so I'm just going to sit here and talk. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. So, how's your night going? Man, I'm living the dream. Um, the day has been kind of rough. I've got a sick kid. You know, I talked to you today, but yeah, sick kid today. Oddest thing. When I was sick as a kid, it was stay home and hang out. Now that we got Zoom and all that other shit, He's actually doing school with a fever, sitting on the couch, like, typing on the keyboard, actually doing s school stuff during the day while he's sick. Just That's absolutely mind-blowing. Mind I love to, like, video games and, like, watching TV. Right. So, let's get a couple things out of the way first. Two rules. What are you drinking, Bobby-O? I've got ranch water. Ranch water. Oh my god, talking of ranch stuff. If you ever if you have Bobby O's personal cell phone number, you will die when you hear his his voicemail. He's oh, talking man. about he's talking about rodeos and rock climbing and you can't spoil her, it. Come on, come on, you can't spoil the get voice. her done. Call it's worth it. Call it. No, if, don't if, <laughs> if you got his number, call it right now. Blow it up. Oh my god. I'm trying to not disturb right now. <laughs> no. Wait, seriously, call well, it's it perfect, worth it. Though. That's perfect because if uh if I do not disturb it goes straight to voicemail. So there you go. Call away. Have at it. Hey, just so everyone knows, call twice, it'll start ringing. <laughs> hey. Oh man, I'm giving away the secrets. <laughs> god oh, damn, <man>. dude. <laughs> hey. Oh, that's funny. We're here to we're here to be real, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, should be good stuff tonight. For one, Bobby oh, yeah. and Bobby, like it's Bobby's world. It is Bobby's world. You didn't ask me what I'm drinking. I up up the ante today because of uh, Justin Hillard. His wife made fun of me for my larceny. Some mean comments. No bullying allowed. Oh fuck that. We're gonna bully. Podcast. But <laughs> up to the game. Ooh, ooh, double oaked. Only made in small batches of 750 milliliters. That's right. Wow. Good shit. It's so delicious. Absolutely. Just awesome. I'm Cheers. gonna be I'm gonna be hammered in a half an hour because this stuff is just amazing. <laughs> it's just a Tuesday. Oh man. It is Tuesday. That's scary. So, yeah, had to move the show today for some various reasons. Some traveling. Bobby's traveling. Traveling with plans Thursday. So. I've got family coming in from uh, out of town, so I apologize for the uh, late notice for for all this fun stuff. But but we're here for some shenanigans. So uh, rule number two, Bobby. What is rule number two? You have to fucking curse in this podcast. We'll get to that. I'm gonna save mine. No, you <laughs> can you can curse more than once. It's oh no, <laughs> it's not no, just I'm saving one. Mine. with the Woodford. Give it 20 minutes. <laughs> Dang. Crazy. crazy. Oh, man. A brilliant VP of business development, right, to develop uh, some business tonight. I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. I'm going to be let, – let's talk about that. So I'm going to probably be jobless by the end of the night. Um, there's a GoFundMe page that we're going to spool up. So 
I can still support my four kids after after I get fired for something I say tonight after a full bottle of Woodford. But there's that. So, so yeah. So we have a a great guest coming on tonight. I've actually fantastic guest. You've been on with him. I think I've I may have done a podcast or two with him. Um, I know you have. But good people, Bobby. Bobby Quinn, indeed yep. from PayPixel. He's building. He's the CEO of PayPixel, uh, and his company is trying to build a decentralized way of sharing drone imagery uh, easily. And it's very drone pilot friendly so that you don't have to get uh, screwed by the jobs that pay you 50 bucks an hour to in the middle of nowhere. And you got to you know, still have to pay for gas and all that stuff. So um, it's a lot. It's very friendly for drone pilots. It's, it's almost like the Uber for drone pilots. Like, wow. Somebody calls and says, hey, I need drone photos. And you get dispatched like, hey, you show up and take drone photos and get paid for it. Cool shit. Super cool shit. Yeah, absolutely. I wish it. I wish it was my idea. Got to be honest, a little jealous. I mean, we got a little uh, drone pilot network going mm-hmm. ourselves. Mm. We've got what, like eight thousand pilots now. So pretty. Holy sweet. shit! It's going. I can't believe how fast it's growing. Absolutely insane. Absolutely yeah. insane. You tell someone something's free, and they're like, "Oh, it's great." Absolutely great. And that's the other big thing about PayPixel. It's free. Like, free. What have you got to lose? Nothing to lose. Everything to gain. Like, literally, free. You can sign up for free. Brilliant. Good stuff. I'm looking forward to talking to him. More, okay, let's be honest here. I don't want to say I'm looking forward to him getting naked, but he did just post that there is a 50% chance that he will be naked before the end of the show. So there's that. That's crazy. That is crazy. Um, I wonder if... Have you seen him naked before? No. No. I don't really want to. But what I'm wondering is, if that were to happen, and one of us were to get on PayPixel and say, hey, we need someone to come fly drones at this address, and we throw his address out there, if somebody will show up to to film him running around in his front yard, throw it on PayPixel. It's got to have a thermal drone as well. I want to see where all the hot spots are. (laughs) Oh, man. That's oh, awesome. Yeah. Oh, yang. Um, I got a new thermal drone in the mail today, which is kind of cool. Wow. A giant Mavic. It's sitting over there on the floor. Oh, let's, there it is. Let's be honest. The M30T, it's a giant freaking Mavic on steroids. Flies quick. It, Flies well. Workhorse. I mean, it's it's a workhorse. thing's awesome. Yeah, but. absolutely. Is that a real fireplace in the back? Yeah, of course. Really? You got my my little remote, my little teeny tiny remote. No, it's not a real fireplace. That's cool. It's my that's my little ambience, my little. Uh... No, in all seriousness, mm. Tennessee right now it's forty one degrees outside. Fuck the cold. It's awful. I'm there. I'm there already. Five minutes in. Woodford. Um, but yeah, the fireplace keeps me warm, warm and cozy. Even nice. when it's not putting out heat, just the flames make me warm inside. Yep. Or is that the Woodford? Uh, could be a combination of both. I mean, there's definitely a possibility of it being a combination of both. Um, hmm. So, so let's talk drone stuff here. Is there anyone else out there that has taken batteries out of a drone after flying and used them to warm themselves? Hmm. I have. Absolutely have. Dude, you... Inspire One used to be great for it because when you would fly in the middle of the winter and stuff like that and you get back, for one, you can't charge the batteries when they're cold. For two, they're super warm. So stick them where it's cold and they warm up quicker that way so you can charge them. Nice. That's interesting. Now we've got all these neat gadgets that heat up themselves. We don't have to worry about all that. I was a little disappointed. I liked having an excuse to stick warm batteries down my pants. I mean, let's be honest. That was the fastest way to warm a battery when it's like 10 degrees outside. Down your pants? Interesting. Well, pants, armpits, like anywhere that's hot. So you can actually get back and up in the air flying, you know, get the batteries charged. And that thing, self-heating batteries, the 
the Matrice 210 self-heating batteries, the 300s. Technology's changing. Can't stick batteries down your pants anymore, but, you know, I digress. Yeah, you still could if you wanted to. I mean, no one's stopping you. That's true. That's true. It's kind of least... like rock climbing, though. It's because uh, when you are when you have cold rock climbing shoes, you just stick them in your armpits like that, and then you warm them up. Nobody really puts them down their pants. <laughs> well, you might ought to try. I bet you they warm up faster. <laughs> oh, man. Am I right? I wouldn't want to be the one rock climbing after you after that, though. Oh, we lost Bobby. Where did he go? Oh, well. So, but yeah, so don't stick the rock climbing shoes down your pants because the next person to climb that wall, it's not going to be, not going to be nice. At least me sticking stuff to warm it up. It's my drone. Like I take the batteries out, I put on the drone and I get back to flying. But now I don't have that excuse anymore. I can't tell people, yeah, I'm just warming up the batteries. No, I'm trying to keep warm, but you know. So, oh, look at, look at that. Do. Bobby Quinn says, well, Hello. Bobby, the odds the odds have jumped to about seventy five percent, depending on what you're drinking. The bookies are dying to know what you're drinking, um, but the odds of you getting naked have gone from fifty. We're up to about seventy five right now, and Ooh. we want to know we want to know if we can call someone or uh, get on the app, hire someone up to come over and pay pixel you while you're running around naked in your front yard. Is that a possibility? We'll talk about that later. Um, so yeah, pay pixel, cool stuff. My new drone, more cool stuff. Batteries, warming yourself when it's cold. So that whole conversation started with my fireplace. I'm telling you, that thing's been a godsend. Like, seriously, godsend. The fireplace? Mm-hmm. Oh, the... Op- cool. I, like it's, the I like the feng shui. It's relaxing. It's warming. It's it makes me feel good. It's a solid background. What do you think? You think I need more plants? Depends on what kind of plants you're talking. Hmm. So do your cats tear your plants apart? Uh, They occasionally eat the green onions, but, I mean, those green onions just keep growing. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, I mean, occasionally they're, like, bad at it, but for the most part, it's all good. So Use some plants over there to balance it out. Like that. Maybe like a hanging ivy or something. You know what I need? I need Greg. I need Greg to show up. His every the studio is freaking awesome there at Pilot Institute. You need to flash that across the screen like Dovo. Um, but the studio there is awesome. You walk around. There's like ten different sets. I just need one, but I need someone to actually design it to make it look like I don't just have a bunch of three D printers and drones all over the place. Because well. This is this is actually my office. This is, I got Lego, I got drones, 3D printers. That's it. Mm-hmm. It's pretty sweet. It's a beautiful looking office, and you got a bar right there as well. So, oh, you don't even see the bar. So, that's the back bar. I'm actually between the bar and the back bar. I actually have a full bar and pool table and all that other fun stuff right there. Um, I should say, I had it. When you have four kids. You lose everything. Like now, the pool table is kid stuff. the The bar, kid stuff. There's kid shit everywhere. No good. Never have kids. Oh no, have kids. It kids. Listen, you know how many drones I've been able to justify purchasing because of my kids. Just throwing. Honey, we need that Lego set. The kids need it. Honey, we need a Mavic Mini. Even the kids can fly it. But let's be honest. I'll let them fly the M30. They can fly the 210. They're seven-year-old flying that stuff. Anyone can fly mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Anybody could sky browse with it. That's true. It's only one button press. Not yeah, a sponsored Skybrows. Not a sponsored video at all. Nope. Um, definitely not sponsored by sky browse. We're not sponsored by anybody. We just... This is what we do on our free time. Just fucking around. Yeah. That's right. That's right. But yeah, one button press. It's good stuff. Good stuff. Shout out to Skybrows. <laughs> cool folks. Uh, oh, shit. Josh Garner. Tima <laughs> in the house. Tennessee Emergency oh, wow. Management Agency coming to talk some trash. Ooh, he's probably serious let, trash. Let, let's be Slinging honest. So he, he's probably right. He said you're paying him too much, Bobby. So, no, Josh Garner. He's another one, man. 
UAS drone stuff for Tennessee Emergency Management Agency, heading the pack. Um, last week, I think it was, he's out there flying with the, I don't know if it's the National Park Service or some federal agency that's got M600s and they're dropping fireballs, burning shit. They're doing backburns with uh, M600s for, for the Park Service. I mean, and he gets to go and hang out with the guys and watch them do it. What the fuck? Where do I sign up? Josh, I want to come out and watch them burn shit with drones. Sign me up. Yeah, that sounds awesome. We should uh, we should get him on the show at some point. We got to hang out with him. Um, we got to hang out with him at uh, one of those conferences that we get went to, uh, Com UAV. So he came to hang out at Com UAV. Um, it was his first drone conference, and I think we ruined him. I really do. Um, oh man, dude! Man, after oh, man. he just got. <laughs> Shout out to Josh. Shout out to Josh. Hell yeah. Dude, he's a good dude. So in all seriousness, he said he's going to set it up so we get to go watch them burn shit. Um, but talking about Josh, I don't want to get him fired from Tima, so I won't go too deep into it. But let's be honest, he wants out of the emergency management space to come fly robots all day and hang out at conferences and get drunk with Dobo. Who doesn't want to do that? That's a good life. <laughs> Who does that? Like, is there somebody that actually, is that their job? Oh, well, that's what biz Devin is. That's all it is. Actually, I got a text. I don't know if he texted you this as well, but remember that challenge coin we gave him? He said yeah. he he, t- he sent me a picture of it, and he was like, "Ever since I got the challenge coin, I put it in my pocket. I've won every single poker game that I've played." And you're welcome. Paid himself <laughs> through. He multiple, said. Multiple he said truth. Years. Yeah. No kidding. That's awesome. So they are a rarity, but we do actually have challenge coins now. Oh, man, we need some drone, drones after dark challenge coins. Oh, for man. All, for all the fucktards that are stupid enough to come on here and talk about drones, like uncensored, we need drones after dark challenge coins. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Where are they going to be? Just the classic logo? Speaking of the classic logo, so I hear this there may be some controversy over season one drones after dark versus season two drones after dark. Like we're in season two right now. Um, wasn't there like a hosting site or Facebook page or something, something that, used that we to don't do... have access to anymore? Why is it streaming through my Facebook now? I mean, it... it used to stream through Spotify and through hmm. uh, the official drones after dark Facebook page, but now it's just me. What was that guy's name that no one remembers? I forgot, but he was the previous co-host. You and... Oh, Paul Rossi. Fuck Paul Rossi. Where is where is the yeah? Where does does he have the rights to all that stuff, or is it like? So I didn't know how to set up a podcast, so he ended up setting up a Buzzsprout account, which is what's being used to stream to you know, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Apple Music. Uh, YouTube and all that stuff and well he has access to all that so he can change up the Spotify playlist the description all that but he never gave me those credentials and then when I asked him you know multiple times over the past year he just never responded about it ghosted ghosted and he doesn't even want to do this podcast anymore that's the worst part I mean just transfer it over to us we'll pay you the uh, Buzzsprout bill how much how much could the buzz sprout bill be let's be honest uh, man like 20 bucks a month well it's more expensive than paypixel so oh my god it's 12 there. bucks a month is so is is he still paying that 12 bucks a month is, i don't know is he gonna want back rent i mean <laughs> for 12 bucks a month i don't know what's that like 140 bucks paul rossi we'll, we'll give you the 100 bucks come on buddy Get off of it. Let us get it back. Us. We it's just not want me. to upload let, stuff to Spotify. Let Bobby get it back. I'm just here talking shit, but let Bobby get it back. Come on, Paul Rossi, please. I'll beg if I have to. Um, so if that's, it was... uh, that's our cheer from now on. Like whenever we need to do a cheers, <laughs> Paul Rossi. <laughs> oh man, if we had to drink every time we said fuck somebody, we'd be. It'd be yeah, a. Yeah. It'd be a. It'd be a two bottle of Woodford night. At that point, 
listen, two but, bottles. Oh man! At that point, that. at that point, Skybrows would have to start paying for my my bourbon drinking during Drones After Dark as well, because my wife wouldn't be having every time we. Yeah, no. We should probably drink every time we say Drone. Now we wouldn't be able to walk home. Oh no, no, that that wouldn't work. That would just that would kill it. That would kill I think, us, man. I think everybody else out there should drink when we say drone. Yeah. Drone. It turns it like a drinking pod. Drone. And we'll all cheers together. Let's see. Have y'all looked into Anchor for podcast hosting? It's free and distributes to multiple platforms. I have not. No, but the, mat- we'll the fact of the matter is, fuck Paul Rossi. We want the Drones After Dark shit back for, for Spotify and everything else because it's already there. This is season two. Season one was done. Season two is now here. If it's already set up, it just makes sense. Yep. So, yep. So, yeah. I don't know. Crazy stuff. Well, what we can do is just uh, if he never, if he never gives us back the Buzzsprout account, what we can do is just make a new one with the same exact thing, Drones After Dark publish it to the same exact platforms and then hopefully our lovely viewers y'all will uh keep watching our episodes and we'll bury the previous drones after dark and just we'll just win by seo that way but it's just not as clean as you know, having everything in the same account right oh man someone is in the lobby should we let them in bobby your video feed just went to shit i don't know if mine did too or what but Oh, it looks fine on. Really? It looks bad it looks, on my computer. Looks, looks fine on Facebook right now. It does. You're right. It's probably my my internet connection. But yeah, someone huh. someone is in the waiting room. Are you going to let them in? Hmm. Wonder who that person is. You don't have to let them in. I'm just saying it's probably a good idea. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. What's up? Right. That looks like a lot of clothing to remove. That's okay. I can do that. What's up, man? <laughs> What's up? <laughs> So let me know if my if my camera goes down. I'll I'll take it off and put it on the shitty MacBook camera. All right, but if your camera goes down, we expect when the new camera comes up, clothing's missing. Just throwing I, it out there. I can do that. Nobody wants to see that, which is exactly why I'll do it. No, Thanks for having me. Glad you're here, man. What so you drinking? Get, get right to it. The uh, we're gonna do. The oh, oh. <laughs> oh shit! I thought you were drinking wine. Good stuff. No, no. Yeah, I got the uh, I got that, and I've got a backup Untitled Art beer. It's a bourbon stout. Mm, good stuff. Good stuff. Hi, I'm boys. a fan. We're going to have to hang out sometime. Not like this hangout, but actually in person. With less clothes, I got it. Well, no, you can keep your clothes on when it's just you and me. <laughs> the viewers might want to see. Who knows? Um, Drone guys are weird, man. Um, <laughs> we all know that. You know. Yeah. Yep. Oh, we've got some we've got some great fucking weirdos just lined up ready to come on the show. Um, what? Oh, dude. So you're down in Florida, right? Do you know Anthony Million? I don't. I haven't met him. Oh man, you're missing out. So Anthony Million's one that I reached out to, like, hey, you want to come on the show? And he's like, yeah, sure. Um, but so he's in the T and D stuff, but he also lives down in Florida. I'm sure he's done a bunch of the the flying down there. He might have a PayPixel account. I don't know. If not, we'll have to get him set up. But. Um, my first online experience with him, I don't really want to ruin it, but was John McBride's kid had cancer. Anthony sent him a care package to the hospital of some homemade beef jerky, fucking wrapped in Pornhub tape. Literally Pornhub <laughs> tape, the entire box. So great fucking weirdos that just good people, man. Absolutely amazing people doing great things. So. Florida's a hell of a place. I don't know if you heard, but... Um... The whole uh, FTX crash and the FTX arena down in Miami, uh, there's something going on right now where Bang Brothers is trying to get their name on the arena. <laughs> no way. <laughs> and and, and I, I want nothing more this year for Christmas than for that to happen because Miami is a skis center of the U.S. and it would just perfectly do that for them. It would do it for me. If that happens, so. Bobby... Skybrow's trip. One? Sorry, Bobby O. Skybrow's <laughs> trip to Florida to to 3D model that. That'd be a cool That's, stadium to model. Especially if it says Bang Bro on the side of it, Bang Bros. I know. <laughs> we we're talking about doing more case studies. That'd, that'd be the perfect case study to show to police chiefs. 
<laughs> yes. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. So yeah. We, we provided ROI for <laughs> the Bang Bros <laughs> Stadium. <laughs> I can't say it with a straight face. <laughs> Holy shit. You, you do that all epic. from video. That's a, that's a long video. But, I mean. <laughs> that's what Bang Bros said. <laughs> <laughs> you show up in a you show up in a van that's uh, a little shady you know you got the bang bus <laughs> oh and, shit uh, the bang bus oh that's I awesome think they're separate companies are they separate companies i don't know are they franchised i i don't know enough about them to be honest <laughs> but if they get their name on that stadium i might start looking to invest i don't shit Oh man! Oh so, man! We gotta. We, we should biz dev at the Bang Bros Stadium. Now, that'd be a cool stadium to biz dev at. I think a little more like than a, biz dev would be going on there. The best I'd type of biz dev. That feel uncomfortable showing up with just my guy friends to that <laughs> to go watch a game <laughs> at the Bang Bros Stadium. That's all I've got is guy <laughs> friends, so I'm I'm screwed in that sense. That's what happens after you get married. You get up. Right? No shit. The so, things we do for our wives. Oh, I bought her her own bottle so she doesn't have to come stick her ass in the... <laughs> She's come up. So the oh, first man. two shows, she comes up because she needs whatever bourbon I'm drinking at the moment. She needs a refill, which I don't blame her. I mean, it's usually good shit, but... But yeah, she, she always makes an appearance. I don't think she's going to tonight, though. She's got her own bottle of wine down there. But... My, nice. My nice. wife has texted me. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but oh, does it show nope. it? No. Nope. She nope. said, bi- no autofocus. She said, bitch, please. She heard me from the other room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. I'll tell you, there's no support like family support, though. Dude, my wife is so unbelievably supportive of all of my shenanigans that I'll never understand it. Never, never be able to wrap my head around it. I wouldn't be where I'm at if it wasn't for her and, and my kids and all that. So. Amen. Cheers. Dobby. Good thing for your wife talking <laughs> shit in the other room. Fuck yes. Paul Rossi. Fuck Paul Rossi. Absolutely. Who is Paul Rossi? I haven't. I haven't heard of him. Seems oh like man, guy. what? weren't you in the chat? Didn't you listen to? I I, I was. I did. What yeah. The fuck. We had the entire podcast. We told an entire story about it. He's got more no, important I... shit to do, like running a business, Bobby. No, Bobby, no, I heard. I I... Wait, where's he? Where's he from? Is he? He's a drone guy. Yeah, I, I yeah, missed. he's in uh, North Carolina. Mm. Okay, yeah, they're in a different, different time zone altogether out there. They don't have time for you, <laughs> right? Uh, he he so just ghosted good? Bobby. You know what's good is PayPixel. Tell us more about it. I mean, I know a little bit about it. There's, I hear good shit about it. Um, no official pitches tonight. No, no official no pitches. Fi- <laughs> I just want something no. to talk shit about the next show. So. Yeah, no, it's totally. I mean, there's there's gonna be a lot, man. Um, we are we are getting funded pretty quickly right now, so we're able to bring a team in and actually make something that's better than what's out there now. Hence the good um, bourbon. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, man. So we we I don't know I don't know what to say. We are going to be making some major milestones and achievements over the next six months, and I'm excited about that. Um, what we've had out there now is like this really early beta and, and, you know, to date we've been like, Hey guys, you know, come try to use our software and tell us where it's broken. And we've gotten some, you know, reviews and responses back and people have shared some files on the platform, but, uh, I, it's not at all even close remotely where I want it to be. Um, and that's about to change and I'm super excited about that. So like I'm, I'm building something really that I wish that I had as a drone pilot. Um, I was an aerial photographer in 2009 and 10 when I got my pilot's license. And I like, I I learned a lot of things there. I carried it over to what we're doing now. And like, just to date, I've seen people get into the industry and like have to learn the same lessons over and over again, using software that's not really built for what we do. And I was like, it's time to build software for what we do, make it easy, uh, have a really good transaction experience for both the customer and you. And not have to send like a bunch of links back and forth. Like just make it make sense. And in, and in doing that, we have a network of people, you know, that are capable of, of fulfilling orders for you across the country. And we kind of wrap up that 
what, what drone base and droners IO and, and uh, Loveland innovations and all these other companies have tried to do uh, over the last six or seven years, we are going to take a stab at it as well, but that's not going to be where we're pulling our major revenue from. So we, the mission statement is just to make a better experience and better process for drone pilots and people ordering from them and, and really become the industry standard. Um, so, you know, hard, hard goals, uh, that we have set. And, you know, a lot of people are going to laugh at that because like, that's what drone pilots do when you make software for them. But, uh, that, that's cool. You know, I hope that we continue to grow. I hope that people see the value that we're bringing and, uh, and I hope that we can continue to bring that value. Nice. So now that's awesome. Now you, it's free. You sign up, it's free, right? So it is, it is now. So to, on the note on that, we're, we're going to continue to always have a freemium service, but we're going to step up and allow a subscription service. And, you know, the goal oh, the next major milestone for us over the next few months is to get to that subscription level. We're aiming at $18 a month right now. And we want to get it to the point where people are like, okay, if you factor that over a year, that's literally one job. The average job in the U S is about 220 bucks that people are flying aerial imagery for. So you're going to pay about 220 bucks, something like that. Uh, it's going to be worth it to you. Um, you're going to want to up, up it every year. You're going to want to tell everybody about it. You're going to want to use our ordering button on your website. That's kind of what we're aiming for. So, um, but yeah, we're right now we're in that stage of like, tell us what you hate about it. Tell us what you love about it. Let us know where we should be building. Um, and we have our own agenda as well. We would just like to hear from our users and like to talk, talk to them a lot. Um, and I've got, uh, I've got some of the brand champions that have been on the, on the platform from day one, delivering their files to their customers primarily through it. So Kelly Willis out of Coos Bay, Oregon. Thank you very much, my man. Uh, Fred Hoekstra, uh, a few others, Brad, uh, Bradshaw, you know, you guys are awesome. Thank you. So, uh, you mentioned freemium and, uh, people telling you what they love and what they hate. I can tell you from experience when we launch freemium, um, you do get those people that are like, oh, this is fucking stupid. Like, and they haven't even flown it yet. Um, you know, you get, you definitely get feedback from people. There's no doubt about that. We, I mean, we're getting feedback. I'm sure you probably deal with a lot of the same stuff. Um, you know, people that are just one, either just sign up for it because it's free or for two, it's like, do, do you find that people expect a whole lot more out of a free service than, than, like, what kind of feedback are you getting from the, the freemium end to end? No, it's, it's actually funny. Um, you know, people are really nice. People have been really, really nice. And, and coming into this industry, and, and not, I mean, I was in the industry, but coming into build and saying, hey, we're establishing ourselves as a builder of software, and we're going to be a network, a drone service for your – I knew immediately that people were going to be like, burn them with fire. <laughs> and, and actually, <laughs> so I saw drone base and I saw the sentiment out there. And by the way, I, every time I say their name, I just want to say that I have a massive amount of respect for the team. They've done amazing things. I will never shit talk them. Uh, with that, I will approach the, the challenge a little differently. And, you know, we've been paying attention to a lot of the user feedback there. So going back to your question, people are really nice and people are really nice in their feedback. And we're like, please hurt our feelings. It's okay. So we need to get to the subscription. This, this seems counterintuitive, but we get the subscription faster because the moment you start dishing out $18 a month, you will be, your voice will be heard. People will want to tell us exactly what's wrong with it. And that's what we're doing. We're just getting there quickly because we literally want to hear you bitch about why, you know, things are going wrong for your know, product you pay for. And we'll fix that's it. Awesome. It's the cool thing. Yeah. Yeah. So. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. We, we find yeah. it's never ending. It reminds me of the early days of Skybrows where I was customer support and I would answer any sort of problems going on and trust me there were plenty of problems in the early days of Skybrows. Like when it worked, it worked great, but a lot of times it didn't work. So I was there to just make sure that we provided the best customer support that you could call me at any time of the day, any time at night, and I'd pick up and help you walk you through it. And um, you know, most of the troubleshooting was pretty easy as well. It wasn't anything crazy. It was more like, you know, go to like the uh go to go to this tab right here and press this button or something like that. It usually didn't take that long to troubleshoot so i was happy to do it and you know hearing from the ceo and you know seeing how receptive he is uh with supporting people was really beneficial for us to move the company forward because you know we were willing to improve and we were willing to work with you on that and that's something that we've always you know kept with us and our uh, mentality moving forward that's good. that's exact yeah that's exactly where we want to be too 
The other thing about Bobby, it he was one of those people that it's like he knew he didn't have all the answers, but he would call the people that did. Um, I once in a great, great, great while was one of those people. Okay, he called me once for help. Um, but he would actually reach out to the people that knew. Like if there was something with a DJI drone, he knew the people to solve that problem. Um, he called Russell one day. We were in, I don't even remember where we were at, but somebody was having a hard time uploading their video. This was like three years ago. And Russell's like, mm, police department, uh, the MDT inside of his patrol unit, it's probably their firewall or something. And sure enough, their IT department, it was their IT department that was blocking it. Um, but, and I know you've built a network of people. How often do you feel like you're reaching out to somebody else for an answer to something? Is that me or the other Bobby? You. Yeah, yeah. Bobby. <laughs> no, I, I uh, talked to good Bobby all day. Uh, yeah, I want to know Nick. Naked the Bobby. Wish. Oh, oh, I should Teacher change it. I'm the Wish.com Bobby, but I should make it to the Wish. Almost, Bobby. <laughs> yeah, the almost naked Bobby. Uh, actually, it's getting really hot in here, um, so I might. Oh get shit! All right. Yeah. Time to, Bookie uh, stats. Drink. Stats. Stats are going up. Oh, we're up to. Yeah, that's right. Up to seventy-eight percent. Bookie's got you at seventy-eight percent naked by the end of the show. Yeah, dude. I I'm so I'm mentally slow, and I know that, and I've got to have people that are smarter than me surround it's really easy to do but i had them surround me um and that's included with my network as well um so we talk about like ken dono and greg oh. from pile institute dude like, i love that I, so i gotta tell you how i met ken because <laughs> so oh, i need another <laughs> drink for this go ahead uh so so i had this idea and i was like man this is a lot like uh you know the other drone network platforms that are out there i but I, we're different and I need to find somebody that has a voice that's super opinionated and kind of an asshole. And, and I came across Ken and I was like, <laughs> bingo. <laughs> and I, and I reached out and I was like, Hey Ken, um, this is what I think of you, but I have a ton of respect for you. And like, you tell it like it is, and you're, you know, you don't mind being abrasive and you know that you are you're self aware. So do me a favor. I'm going to I'm going to slow pitch this to you. And, and I want you to shit all over it. Just tell me exactly where you think it's going to fail and what you think is horrible about it. And I'll never forget, like I told him and I was expecting, like I was bracing for it. And he was like, dude, it's actually a really good idea. I like it. In, in short, I was like, okay. So, I mean, honestly, and he's like, well, I would do this and this, but yeah, yeah, it's, it's a good idea. And I was like, okay, well, shit. And he ended up being a really nice guy. And um, he and Greg are pulling me through and Bobby, you guys are, you guys are pulling me through and, um, you know, I, I appreciate that and going to be looking forward to paying back when I can. We'll be collecting. Yeah. <laughs> Bobby was gotta... telling me he wants to be your lackey when he grows up. I don't know what that was all about, but. Which Bobby? <laughs> Bob. All right. Oh, Bobby, <laughs> Bobby Oyang told me earlier that naked Bobby, that he wants to be naked Bobby's lackey when he's when he's older, when he grows up. Hold up. Oh, oh it's there happening. it is. There it is. Did you see that? Live. We're going to have to put a rating on this one. All right. We're 17 minutes in. He didn't hear what we said, so we're good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so it's funny. So last time, actually the first time that I met Dovo, um, he actually pitched me on something, and Bobby bought it today. I'm, I, I kind of feel special because he was drunk. Um, talking about Dobo. Dobo was drunk. Um, I may have been slightly inebriated. We were sitting there. We had ordered some stupid, ridiculous, amazingly expensive and fantastic steaks. Um, but he pitched the jock strap. He's like, hey, what do you think about something that slips on the back of the Avada and holds the battery? And I'm like, is there really a use for that? He's like, um, here's how he came up with the idea. And it was him and fucking uh, Billy Kyle. They were flying rope. Him, Billy, Greg, a whole bunch of them. But they were flying robots in the middle of the fucking desert and wrecked his drone and couldn't. Billy wrecked his drone. I'm like, you know what? You might be onto something. Like a week later, dude released the jock strap and it fucking works. Bobby bought one today. Bobby bought a purple jock strap today from Dobo. Yeah, and it's not, the, the it's bouncer, the, only one. The, the bouncy kit as well. <laughs> He bought a ribbed for her pleasure or ribbed for whatever it is, ribbed for the Avada, um, and a jock strap, all courtesy of Ken Dono. Is that the is that the glow in the dark one too for Oh shit. They have glow in the dark? 
Yeah, they just he just he just put out a glow in the dark one. That's fucked. oh my god, dang it! I, why didn't I get the glow in the dark one? <laughs> well, you gotta buy it again. Oh, you gotta man. buy it. We should Eight. put up his link, his Etsy link, so everyone has it, so they can go right out and get it right now. Two is one, oh, one man. is none. That's true. Yep. Where's that link? I'll post it in the uh, chat. He texted it to me earlier today. Let's see. Shout out to OriginalDoboStore.com. Get your... There it is. On the chat. Worth it. Dude, he's got some accessory. awesome stuff. Some I mean, stuff. That's, that's literally like... I, he literally pulled that out of his ass that afternoon and was like, Hey, what do you guys think about this? To solve a problem. Something to solve a problem that wasn't existent at the time and... Poof. Who does his the designs? Jockstrap. Does he does he outsource it? I or don't does he do know. Himself? Secret. There's no telling. We need to get him on the show so we can ask him all these questions so we can steal all of his uh, designers Perfect. and stuff because he's got some yeah. good shit. Yeah, yeah I know somebody asked for his STL files. So I, so I was gonna say somebody asked for his STL files. He's like, they're not for sale. It's my it's my store, dude. Yeah, we should yeah. do that. Ask crazy. Him. It's the stuff you deal with, though, when you like start going more consumer. You just start dealing with a lot of, a lot of interesting questions out there. Yep. So, yep. so I've been. So I got to. I, I have a question. I've been like heads down for so long, and I feel so out of touch with the industry itself. This crazy volatile industry that we are in. No, I um, love it. What's the What's the good tea these days? What's What's the drama going down? The good tea is green tea. Um, we've had a lot of that go down in the last couple of weeks or months or years. Um, but no, as far as the drama stuff, it's it's all blue UAS related. It's it's all the political bullshit that's driving the madness. Um, aside from that, nothing super crazy, surprisingly. I mean, um, there's a lot of shit going on in Ukraine. We've been following that really close. People using drones for stuff that some people don't approve of, but... We all knew it was going to happen. Um, so some of that's slightly controversial. But as far as here goes, um, you, we've got great people like Vic Moss and, and Kenji. And on on the regulation side, I think we have some really brilliant people trying to push the forefront of all of that stuff and helping guide the right people to make the decisions that they need to make. But on the political side, we have people throwing fuck you money at politicians just to make stupid shit like outlawing DJI. The annual Blue Ice SUAS segment of Drones After Dark. Where annual? We weekly. Weekly, where we oh, bash stupid right. bullshit. Um, but that's the biggest drama. And I catch a lot of flack. A lot of people are like, oh, you know, talking about that stuff, you're, you're segregating the industry and, you know, you're not doing any good. This is, this is not helpful to people and that you're being negative. And the fact of the matter is they fucked public safety in Florida. Bad. Um, that's your state. Do you see do you see all of that going on? Is that something that's happening behind closed doors or is that something you see your politicians actively pushing? I mean me? No. Yeah. I, it's not I, it's non existent to me. I, I but I don't live in that world. You know, I, I tip tap in the uh the, the public safety, like I was down at Hurricane Ian, but I wasn't I wasn't interfacing them at all. So I try to give our data to them, but they didn't even use it. So they told me to fuck off. I was a normal guy. I was a regular Joe. And they're like, we don't need your shit. And so, the state EOC contacted me for it. So, eh. Fact of the matter is, were you flying DJI? Yeah, absolutely. Legally, they can't use your shit. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? So it, that's all the political. So I volunteer for a nonprofit called Stormpoint. We go to all mm -hmm. sorts of shit. Um, Russell is down there at Ian. I'll probably introduce you to Russell. No, um, I, met yeah. him. I met him. Oh, I met okay. him. Uh, yeah, I used the Starlink. Oh, there you go. Um, yeah, he's awesome. There's no telling Thanks. how many people have used that Starlink, but <laughs> dude, great fucking guy. But he he's was amazing. one of those people. He, he was one of those people. He's like, I hope to God somebody questions me about what kind of drone I'm flying when I'm down here. He knows it won't happen because the politicians that made the regulation, you could take a label maker and type out Skydio and put it over the DJI logo and they would never have any idea. But the fact of the matter is he goes down to Florida a lot. Stormpoint goes down to Florida a lot. We fly all DJI and Altel right now. Um, and 
technically we can't work for a government agency down there and fly DJI and stuff because of regulation. Um, little fucked up. So that's, I think that's the biggest controversy that I know of that's going on at the moment. Um, so let's, uh, let's go back to the hurricane itself. So you said you were at hurricane Ian. What happened? What were you down there for? And did you, what happened? Did you get any press coverage or anything in hurricane Ian? <laughs> yeah. What, what happened? No, to Ian? no idea. Yeah, I don't know. I'm really curious. I, yeah. I don't know. Something, something happened. It's kind of crazy, dude. I, so I don't know, man. I, I told a little bit of the story. 60 minutes. Got it. Uh, you know, we were around 60 minutes. Uh, wow. 60 soup. minutes. And then you Super. agree to talk to us, fucktards? Really? <laughs> Get on the like, <laughs> dark afterwards? Man, okay. No, so so here's here's what happened. Like, uh, the, the economy sucks, right? And we weren't making money. Um, we, obviously, we're pre-revenue, and it's really hard to raise right now as a pre-seed company. And, uh, and I was telling the guys in September, like, look, the end of September, this is it. This is the last month that we have. I can't really afford you anymore. Let's go part time. Let's keep the servers up and running for the next six or seven months is all we have money for. And, you know, let's plan to kind of winterize and we'll work part time and try to stay alive for opportunity. But whatever. Sunday came around. Uh, the hurricane hit late Wednesday, I believe it was the 28th. I, I could be wrong on that. It was September. But the Sunday before, I was a weather forecaster in the Air Force. And I was like, I've been watching the storm for a little bit. And I go, this is going to be a major storm. It's going to be a Cat 4 or 5. And like Hurricane Michael, everything was just everything was out for weeks some people weren't able to see their home uh there's no comms for several days in most areas uh and then weeks for some of the areas like you couldn't get 5g you couldn't get lte you could get nothing and there what i observed when i was there was so many people had homes that they had no idea what was going on with them they were evacuated they couldn't go back home there's uh you know people were distraught there's a, a large sense of hopelessness and that sucked and so i'm, I'm looking at this like there's all these pilots that are going down to fly for Florida power and lighting. They're flying for the insurance companies they are flying for this and they're flying for that. But like, but if you think society, like I, I get it from a business standpoint, I was like, dude, I got to go down and I just got to be able to get imagery ground, like from the ground, smartphone imagery and where we can drone imagery where it's legal of these, of these homes that are destroyed and, and go back to like the homeowners screw the EOC, screw all the police and, and all that, not, not screw them. Like they're doing their own thing, right? Nobody's focusing on the homeowner. So dude, Sunday, I, I tell the guys, I'm like, Hey, look, you know, we have two options. We could do something cool for like a handful of people. Maybe they'll hear about it. Uh, or we could just lay down and die and wait for failure to come. It's up to you. Do you want to build something that homeowners could easily order imagery for their property for free? And we go fulfill it for them and we allow anybody to fulfill it. Or do we just quit? And they're like, no, let's do it. We built this this far. You know, we've been building for 15 months. And that's what we did. Uh, and we, we took the tools that we had. We, we spent the next 80 hours, over 100 hours before the storm came, and use our Esri tools. That we, we just partnered with Esri, by the way, too, as a startup. They, nice. they brought us into the program. That's um, awesome. Yeah, it's super cool. Uh, and, and we use that, that tool um, through Esri's Experience Builder to allow people to order their property. And so I go out there and I'm thinking nothing of it. You know, I'm being a dumbass. I have the American flag. I'm like, it's a hundred knot winds holding up the flag, <laughs> taking a stupid profile photo. I'm doing it on Facebook live. My friends are like, Oh my God, you're so stupid. You're an idiot. I'm having the time of my life. Weather forecaster in a cat four, potentially cat five hurricane eyes coming. I can hear this, this, the hurricane hunters in the eye, which is the weirdest thing. I have it on video and you could hear the, the hurricane hunters flying around at, you know, 9,000 feet or where, wherever they were at. Um, but the next day was like, it was, it was like business for me. So I, I get in and, um, long story short, I ask on Twitter, if anybody's got a motorcycle, somebody who evacuated the area had a scooter. And they said, if you can get a key from my friend, that's two neighborhoods away, you can have access to my house, borrow my scooter and go out and take pictures. I was like, dope. Never met this person before. Um, Bobby reached out. I asked for a sky, a, a, a Starlink router. And Bobby's like, Hey, let me hook you up a Russell. So Bobby helped me out on that end. That was super cool. And, uh, and shit, I'm in business, man. So I spent most of the time on the scooter, holding up my iPhone, going door to door to door, just snapping photos, geotagging them, uploading them. I had to go back out to St. Pete to upload the photos and then went back down day two and finished up, ended up doing 117 miles, nine hours, 8,000 images uploaded. And 
what I didn't realize was that we thought there was gonna be like 14 people that requested imagery. Shit, in the first 24 hours, we had 900 requests, and most of them came from Rotunda West, which is this big, circular, weird-looking Death Star community. We had 5,500 homes in there. Um, we had 800 requests, and then the next day was like 1,600 requests, and the next day was 2,000 requests. So we weren't able to really handle all those requests. We had 50 people, strangers that I never met, like heard about us, and they were fulfilling imagery orders on the app. Um, so it was nuts. Um, but the cool thing was like, we didn't charge anything for it. We lo we spent about $2,200 on it. I lost two tires for my truck because of nails from it. Uh, I didn't know what to, like, I had no idea what to do. Right. And I just wanted to help. And we had dozens of messages come in over a hundred now of, you know, a affirmation, like, dude, what you did for us is awesome. We used it. I'm part of the Cajun Navy. We use your app primarily before we go out now. And that's, that's what we do. I was like, holy shit, what? And it was really cool. So CBS reached out and said, Hey, you want to be on 60 minutes? And I'm like, of course. But at the same time, I feel bad because like, I wasn't looking to get press coverage from it. But at the same time, I'm, I'm compelled to do it. And I'm kind of obligated to do it because my team has committed so much work over the last 15 months to what we've been building. So yeah, I've got to, um, turns out, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of contractors in the restoration and roofing and claim space saw that and it's been passed around in that industry i showed up to a public adjuster meeting conference in miami a couple of weeks ago first time i'd ever been in that space and like within three minutes three people recognized me right away and they're like bobby quinn from 60 minutes and i was like what and they're like dude what you did was awesome and we want to work with you and now um it's like it's night and day you know the guys that are coming to me now are asking if they can invest they believe in me they believe in what we're doing as a team um and it's really making things come together but even better is they're, they're linked with the customers that we're trying to get in front of, and now they're gonna help us open the door and get us in front of those customers and get them right in the room. Um, so it's, it's been an amazing thing for us. Uh, it's a godsend, it's a blessing, and, and we were super stupid lucky. Good That's things great, happen man. to good people, for sure. That's great. I don't, so I, I don't know about that. Your shirt? When are you getting I, naked? I mean, oh God, here we go. Yeah, I'm built like Hank Hill, so I don't think anybody really wants to see that. <laughs> I don't climb rocks for a living. <laughs> so me neither. I hide I hide my body with my microphone, so there's that. I oh, would man. say it, it's going to be only a third interesting if I take my shirt off. But if we all take our shirts off, oh, you're oh, going to get higher ratings and bots. reshares than you ever have before. It's see, he's thinking bots. about it. Jeff's thinking about it. I think... I'm I'm only my second drink in, so it might take another another <laughs> half a drink. I don't know. No, but that's Dang. so I didn't for one, I didn't know that you met Russell down there. So Russell and I talk all the fucking time. I mean he's he lives, you know, ten minutes from me. Um I'm actually the operations director for Stormpoint. Oh, cool. So since then, the amount of people that we do skybrows everywhere, like the hundred mile tornado that came through, we skybrows a bunch of that with Stormpoint. That's just the software that we have available to us to use. Um, not trying to sell it or anything. But before Starlink, we'd have to, have to drive places to upload shit. Like, drive to the closest wherever that has internet. Um, and Starlink changed all of that. We got one... We actually, funny story. We actually bought two Starlinks for Stormpoint. We're down to one. Um, we were testing one out, and Russell decided to take a 911 call. Um, with a Starlink on the top of his truck, and we're down to one. So, there's that. Um, he didn't know until he looked in his rear view and saw it smashing on the interstate. But, anyways, went down to the hurricane. This was this was the first deployment that we actually. I mean, we've used it for searches and stuff around here, but first big deployment. You never know. Is that shit going to get overwhelmed? Is it like, you know, we have first net show up with their cows and everything else. Um, but even then the amount of public safety that's using the first net hotspots and the first net cows and so it's still, it's, it's slow. Starlink from everything that he said when it was down there was a godsend to just about anyone that connected to it. But that's crazy that, that Bobby connected you to him while you were down there too. That's it's the power awesome. of network. So you asked Hell earlier yeah. if I, if I have people in the network and yeah, it absolutely. And Bobby, um, has been pivotal. So cheers, my man. Hell Thank yeah. You. Yeah. Yeah. It was Glad so the Starlink was really slow for me. Unfortunately, that night it uh, I had a lot of images though. I had eight thousand upload. Um, they were about twelve point five on average megapiece. 
so I had to actually, I, I, I stopped after an hour. I only had about 250 uploaded. So I had, to, I still had to drive home, but, um, mm-hmm. I imagine when Starlink is connected and it's hot, it's gotta be amazing. Like I, I want one in the future. Yep. So, I mean, the fact that you have internet in the middle of nowhere, it's been super awesome. helpful for us. Good stuff. Hell yeah. And the fact that you got to meet Russell, did you get to hang out with Russell at all? Very little. So he was he was trying to work a deal, a drug deal with the Love's gas station. Um, you know, they they said that they weren't able to connect. They didn't have power, so they weren't able to hit Wi-Fi and the routers. But if he could get them up online, they would hook him up with gas. So he was busy. <laughs> doing, he was busy doing that, and and he got me oh, in. Man. Like it was a first responder only thing. And here I am. I'm a scrub. Uh, I'm a prior law enforcement officer too. I was a prior military and law enforcement officer, and I, and I've been disaster response my whole life. Uh, I'm a former CAP nerd, and uh, it is what it is. Uh, I'm happy to talk about it. All my best friends today are from Civil Air Patrol, so I, you know, no shame. I'm not hiding it. I'm a huge nerd. So I, but I know that space well. Um, I'm just not a cop anymore, and I wasn't allowed into the gas station to get, you know, an energy drink. But with him there, he was like. He's like, he had the sign and they let me in and I was able to go buy a couple oh, of things man. <laughs> and they That's treated funny. me well. Yeah. So, oh. um, what I was going to say, it was on the way out there. It was pretty funny because I, I had to do, I don't know, it was, it was an hour drive and most of it was on I-75 and I had this little Yamaha scooter and I was like tucking in, trying to get to 65 miles an hour on I-75 in the middle of the night. And Did you I was have a trying... helmet? No. <laughs> Fuck, man. <laughs> Dude. And I, I asked I asked one of the cops, so one of the sketchy. roads was closed, and one of the roads had been washed out completely, and the cops were stopping traffic, and the cop was like, yeah, you can't come through here. The only way you can get to North Fort Myers is to take 75, and I looked down at my scooter, and I was like, with this? And he was like, sorry, dude. Yep. I was like, all right. So there I am, driving down the road, like like shaking, it's super cold, it's freezing out, and then, you know, trying to stay up on the scooter, and people are passing me like, like 90, 110 miles an hour. Uh, and I made it there, and I lived. So that was a that was an adventure in itself to go see <laughs> Russell. Oh, that's awesome! Damn, and uh, the story behind that adventures with Russell. If I had a dollar for every show we could make, that's adventures with Russell. Oh man, we got uh, we got to oh, get God. Russ on the show. I mean, we we do so much shit at conferences, and Russ takes care of us afterwards. Like, no kidding. So many stories, dude. He's dude. I... He's genuine. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I was just going to say, Bobby, I, I wanted to sky browse for you while I was out there. I had, like, I was running out of daylight taking the ground imagery, and then when I went back out for the drone imagery, um, I have, like, 23 orders to fill in one day. There was no way I was able to get to it, but I'm like, and then if I wanted to, it was difficult to get that uploaded as well. So my bad for letting you down uh, next time, for sure. I'll bring more drones. And sorry, we were talking about Russell. No, but it sounds like you did good while you're there. So as far as I'm concerned, it's not a letdown. I mean, yeah, yeah, you're helping other people out. So we we get it. The, good. A, a minute and ten seconds out of your life. No, we understand if you don't have that for us. Like, I know, I know. <laughs> too busy to press one button and watch the drone fly itself for under two minutes. Way uh, too busy for that. He's like, shit is getting thick, guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, <laughs> that's a lot of whiskey, dude. <laughs> I should have preempted that with Paul Rossi, Paul Rossi, Paul Rossi, Paul Rossi, but you know, uh, fuck Paul Rossi. <laughs> uh, Bobby, Bobby Quinn is new. Fuck you, Bobby. <laughs> uh, but no, there there are so many freaking good people doing good shit in the drone industry. But let's let's be real. There are a lot of people that are doing. There are a lot of people that think that they're doing good shit in the drone industry, and yeah. Just, well, some people are doing it for clout and just promoting themselves. Yes. Yep. That's that's a key tenant of the drone industry. It yeah. doesn't take a lot to realize that. But like the whole paint I'm, glad, I'm glad you I'm glad you said that by the way cuz I, I feel that in my heart. I don't want to throw shade on anybody because I don't want that karma. Oh, we throw shade all the time. It's drones after dark. <laughs> but it's true, man. Like I I try to when I talk about I I don't like talking about me. I talk about my team. I, I, the team is doing amazing things. Dude, they've agreed to work for me for nothing. For for fucking Taco Bell for the last 15 months. And and I owe everything to them. So I don't get Taco Bell. Fuck. That's all I paid them. That's all I paid them. <laughs> that's so. Yeah, man. That's you only loyalty, get, though. <laughs> you that's... only get green tea shots and steak dinners. Right. I. But by the sounds of it, it sounds like 
the wish.com Bobby is headed towards green tea shots and steak dinners, like doing the right shit at the right time for the right people. And that's One can where it's help, headed. It, 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 you know, dude, I don't know. Like that's the new motto after Ian. It's like, okay, it, it proved itself. Do good for other people mm-hmm. in your heart with the right intentions and shit's going to come through. People see it like the So the investor tonight that reached out that just, he stroked us a $50,000 check for this round. And his partner did another 50. That's not small money, man. And, um, you know, he texted me tonight and said, I sent this video to my mother in 60 minutes and she was crying. And because she was proud of me for investing in you. And she was so happy to hear this because we had gone through this and we lost our home and we didn't know for weeks what the status of the house was. So it literally resonated. I'm like, shit, <laughs> didn't expect that ever to happen like that. So boom, I don't know. It's We're awesome. going to keep it up. We're going to keep it up. Good stuff. I mean, I know the tornadoes in Kentucky, we could have used it. I mean, we had people literally calling us like, hey, are you anywhere near this? Well, no, it's a 100-mile tornado. We're not anywhere near that. We're we're 45 miles from that. They're like, oh, well, there's a gated community, and no one has been in there to visit. Like, we don't know if family's okay. We don't know if, you know, but something like what you were doing down in Ian, throw that – the pay pixel and you made a map of it, correct? On the website there's a there's actually a map of the whole Hurricane Ian thing. Yep. I mean Yeah, we we reached out to a satellite company and we're like, Hey, <laughs> I know you don't really know us that well, we've been talking a little bit, but you want to partner and give us some post event sat- satellite imagery? Now that whiskey's hitting or the bourbon's hitting. <clears throat> Same, same. Well, that's because you just fucked Paul Rossi eight times. So Yeah. <laughs> you had a really big fuck Paul Rossi. I was getting shamed, man. It was a shame slam. Uh, we're gonna so, shame you about your shirt in a minute, but we'll we'll wait till you've had some more bourbon. Um, but no, but, I mean, uh, uh, seriously I though, mean, doing but, good for people will go a long, long, long way. Um, like we talked about Russell, he he's nonstop. I mean, he may be a little over the top with the volunteer stuff. He's that's what he does. He volunteers for everything, um, and running a nonprofit. Everybody that works for for Stormpoint is all volunteer. I've literally watched people walk up to him with cash, like, here, thank you for what you've done. Take it. And he's like, no, bring that to the church down there. They need it way more than I do, you know? And it's paid itself off. Like, I don't know where, honestly, drones come out of nowhere for Stormpoint. I don't know how we do what we do with Stormpoint. Um, Bobby showed up out of the middle of nowhere like, oh, yeah, mapping software? Sure, here you go. Um, I've had it. DJI, we were at the tornado in Kentucky. Fucking Wayne Baker called up. He's like, hey, drones? Oh, yeah, we got that. Make me a wish list. And they sent us what we needed. Um, but that's just it. Doing the right thing and doing good stuff for people pays off a hundredfold in the end. You know, and, and can- you're obviously doing good stuff for people. That's awesome. I don't know what the agenda of the show is, but can we take a minute to talk about that? Yeah, let's talk. There is no agenda. So, that's the whole okay. thing. Unscripted, unfiltered. 100 miles an hour, let's go. You got more bourbon. <laughs> Came out oh, of- yeah. Yeah, I drink a lot. I'm 13 years <laughs> military, man. We run, on, we run on liquor and anger and hatred. I don't know um, if you can read, but I've got a sippy cup. See, it's daddy's sippy cup, so I don't... I, don't I, saw, I, saw, that from your, I saw that from your Facebook post. Um, yeah, I've had, I saw my wa- wash down water. It's my Top Gun cup. Nope, sorry. Oh, yeah, man, Top I'm a fan. My- we definitely got to hang out. That's my favorite all-time movie is Top Gun. Same. Oh, dude, I watched it a million times as an eight-year-old. I went into the military to be a fighter pilot, and Fuck come yeah. to find out, I'm genetically inferior. So I ended up being a listed swine. Yeah. Genetically yeah. inferior? Do you have like, I, bad I, eyesight or something? No, my mother is deaf. My daughter is deaf. I carry a gene called brachia otorenal, and it, and I was actually in the running for a scholarship to be uh, commissioned and go to flight school, but I got disqualified at the last minute because of piss, blood, and protein. Fun fact about the PayPixel co-founder. <laughs> Uh, no, I've got, I got shitty kidneys and they're like, yeah, they're going to crack under pressure. So the nephrologist of the air force is like, you're, you're done. You're out. Um, let's be honest. The shit they put their bodies through, like they have, they have to filter like that. Like, I mean, it sucks Uh, for, for your end. It sucks, but let's be honest. PayPixel wouldn't be here if, if you had gone that other route. That's right. Well, so so yeah, yeah. What, what were you going to bring up that you wanted to talk about? Yeah. yeah, So, so I think that that. We're like in the industry as a whole, we 
are at this at this state where there's still a negative stigma. There's still a really negative stigma. Like uh, mm-hmm. I'm dealing with an order tonight where somebody's going to go out and capture in California, and uh, you, you go fly across the country. It's it's a it's a gamble. Is somebody going to come out and shit on you because you're flying a legal collection or you know, shoot at you? Of, or shoot at you. I've been there. I've done oh, that. Even from drones, I've done that. I'm sure you guys have. Um, and, and so, but but there's a there's a negative stigma. And as a community, as leaders in the industry, and not saying that I'm there yet, but Bobby, you are absolutely a leader, right? Uh, Greg, Ken, we all have a voice, and we, or you guys, I should say, influence people that are watching, and. We have this. We have this network, this neural network of of operators right now that are operating, in, in, you know, across the country. We we have the ability to influence drones for good, uh, like a corny hashtag. But I feel like that's the key to overcoming this the stigma, to educate the public, to let the public know that we're doing something good for them, and really focus on that. Like, there's been a lot of talk about blue UAS. There's been a lot of talk about. Uh, you know, Altel versus DJI versus Skydio, but but really, we're sitting here. We're 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 oppressed. I'll say oppressed. I hate the federal government. I worked for you for far too long. You evil fucking entity. I'll say that. Uh, Ratings you, just went up too. So there's that. Yeah, right. you take off your shirt. Let's, we're getting close. <laughs> getting Bobby, close. <laughs> Ooh. Bobby, oh, you're begging. Oh shit. So I'm a, I'm enlisted military 13 years and a non-commissioned officer and uh, and it, 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 it doesn't mean much it doesn't mean anything really all I know is that I know how to work the system the system this, there's a system the federal government is fucking hard to work around it's even harder when you have a society that doesn't want a technology to progress or doesn't really see a need to so drunken ramble really wish that we would come together and find a way collectively across all states to implement you know a drones for good cause to to get society in with us to get the country behind us and say like to get the average person the layman to go oh shit drones are really good for doing this this and this and instead you know it's 2022 we should be accepting that technology but it's really slow to adopt unlike cell phones where everyone has one you know, only only eight percent, six percent of the population has ever seen a drone or used a drone. You know, um, so we have like a lot of education to go. We have a, we have a lot of of uh, we have a huge effort ahead of us. Uh, that's do you all. think uh, Do you think drones will always be niche, or do you think we'll ever reach a mainstream phase of drones? And if so, which it seems like you think it will, how are we going to get there? Is it going to be DFR drones in a box or? There's going to be like RoboCop drones kind of shooting at you. <laughs> I hope it's not mainstream <laughs> RoboCop drones shooting at you because we're fucked. Well, I, I think it starts with, I think it starts with new leadership at the FAA. Each reauthorization, we're clinging to uh, an archaic system. We're clinging to dinosaurs making legislation. I fuck. For example, let's just be real. I asked him for one thing. I'm begging the FAA for one thing, one, one. And all that is is a single API line that I can, I can make a query to for a, for a part 107 number and get back whether that person actually has a part 107. We just want to do programmatic validation of somebody's part 107. It's, it's a benefit. It's mutually beneficial for industry and for the FAA. We don't want to empower people who don't have a 107 going out and, and, and transacting on our platform. We, it's not right. There's we no want look the up? people. So there's th- no, no. There, there, there is a lookup, um, but it's through the actual airman certificates. And it's wonky. It's not like you can just type in a 107 number and say if it's valid or not. You literally have to type in first name and state or last le- first and last name and state like you need you actually need some sort of info which is really fucked up because let's be honest remote id they want to broadcast everything about you in real time like hey yeah blah, blah, blah. and i got a fucked up neighbor i don't know if you've watched the show the last couple of days but <laughs> that dude's gonna come over and shoot me while i'm flying one of these days it's guaranteed <laughs> it's very close getting um, very close it's it's, it's guaranteed and the fa is like yeah yeah let's support that um, but something like finding someone's 107 and seeing if it's valid is, is, is a pain in the ass. It's, you actually have to know the state that they live in or the city. You need to know some information about them to look them up through the, the airman's registry. 
Um, it, well, you know, I, I bring that up because it's it's the core, and I'm and I'm definitely calling them out. I, I know how you work. I know how you work. I know your government agency and how you work. You don't have incentive to do anything to help the industry. You have incentive to go through your job day to day and go home at the end of the day to your family. And everyone does. You and your bosses do, and it sucks. And that's what's wrong with our government, because it it. it if they had an incentive to help, if they had an incentive to push and, and further our industry, they would be solving problems like this for us. They would be helping us out. But it, it's not It's not like that. And that's that's unfortunate. And that has to change. Uh, the way that I see the mainstream implementation is is kind of in, in line with eVTOL in a way. Like I feel like we're going to we're gonna be seeing eVTOL and Uber Airs before we see a full mainstream implementation of drones. And it's going to well, be... Have you heard of Blade? Mm-hmm. Well, Blade's essentially EV tolls, except with helicopters. And that's mm-hmm. all it is. It's Uber for helicopters. And, you know, Uber copied them as well after they realized that there's a lot of demand for it. And we already have that right now. Yeah, it, I, I think, I don't know. I, I, I think, well, helicopters have a, you can go back and forth on it. EV toll has the promise of lower operational costs per hour uh widespread i'm i'm I, I have to admit that i'm in a faa working group for ev tolls i've been shitty and i haven't been lately um but i'm in the public safety ev toll working group for the faa so i'm probably going to get kicked out after this episode if anybody sees this because i'm shit talking them if they kick you out fuck them um but, yeah so, I, I don't need it i just want to touch back on something and sparky points out a good good point sparky Sorensen po- shout commented. out to sparky huge shout, shout out to sparky. sparky he's doing good shit um but yeah so the one thing the FAA registry does not tell you is if you're current or not. So me, I passed 107. It was, I don't know, April 21st in whenever the fuck they released it. Um, But it doesn't show if I've taken a recurrent. It doesn't show if it's active. It doesn't show any of that stuff. Yeah. I honestly don't think they know. I don't think they do either. Um, No, because so I'm, I'm a 61 guy, right? And I need to be, I need to be medically oh, current. So you're one of those guys that literally just had to click, 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 fail the test, then click, 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 fail the test, then click, 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 pass the test, and you were good to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> Called out. <laughs> uh... Yeah, no, I'm a, yeah, I'm a real pilot, okay? <laughs> I'm a real pilot. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, no, so I'm a 61, and I need to be medically certified, I need to be medically current, and I need to have a, a current biennial, uh, or a B, I'm sorry, a, a BFR. Um, and and there's I know the databases, because I've taken the databases, and I geocoded all of you. <laughs> uh, but but they're, they're on different tables, and I know that the FAA is not looking at that. They, dude, it's so check the box, and they know it, and now- it's sad. Now, in all seriousness, don't mind me while I'm getting another drink, um, but there are some people at the FAA that are doing crazy good things. Um, Dave Bear, uh, I'm looking at you. You're awesome. Dave Bear, yep. Kevin Morris is another one. Um, Kevin is great. All of the guys at SOSC, I can't say enough about them, but their hands are tied when it comes to regulation and, and all that shit. Like They can help public safety. They can help people during emergencies. Um, those guys are, oh, my God. But as as a whole, let's be honest, all of the FARs, and you know, you're a 61 pilot, all of the FARs for airplanes were written in blood. Every one of them. Someone fucking died. Let's write a, a, a law to figure out how to stop that from happening again. Um, all of the shit for drones was written on a fuck ton of what ifs. Like, what if this happens? What if someone does fly a tiny whoop into someone's eye and they lose their eye for the rest of their life? We should ban them. Um, but no, it was, it was basically a whole bunch of what ifs from a bunch of pilots, mind you, a bunch of, of pilot minded people. Um, and did they source information elsewhere? Yes. But now we're playing catch up with people like Vic Moss and Kenji and, and you know, even the, the big drone manufacturer, Brennan Schulman did a whole bunch of shit with the FAA. Um, and, but now they wrote the regulation and now we're trying to catch up and fix shit that was never broken in the first place. They broke it. 
But that's federal yep. government. I digress. Well, going off your point, you know what we can do? We could lobby them and ban certain drones to really advance the industry. Oh, here we go. <laughs> uh, so, you know, unless I'm Tom Walker and I have a Walmart contract for $10 million, I'm not going to have a voice. It's 100. In, 100 million Ten now. Ten times that much. Yeah, well, good. Good for them. Good for you, Tom. You're doing great. Uh, but if unless, unless I'm them, I have no voice in the FAA, and that's unfortunate. <laughs> it's because it's it, the, that's our dude. That's our government. That's politics. It's pay to play. Um, it is what it is. Don't so, mind me. I'm just making my drone legal to fly in Florida. Putting a gun on it, please. Well, it's kind of like the FTX debacle, right? I mean, that's what Sam did. He donated a shitload of money to Joe Biden, and I, he was able to just do whatever he wanted. And just enough I see money it. is enough to influence people. <laughs> I see is an that AR-15. The... Is that is it? The... No. Oh huh? no, that's a it, really big it's, drone. It's a giant <laughs> Mavic. That's an that's an assault drone. That's a Maverick. Right now, right now it's illegal because it says DJI on the back. But I'm going to fix that. <laughs> Oh man! Oh man! It's the per the pink. That's Pilot Institute pink. Make sure we don't break their trademarks. So, in all don't seriousness, it. in all through nope. the FAA website, very proud of that. And the next thing I did was emailed the email that I'm supposed to email from Pilot Institute to get free stickers with the registration shit. So, there it is. I got a shout out to Greg on that because I tried that in the beginning, Dude, and I'm sorry he's for the amazing. I'm sorry for the 47 people on my Google Sheet that signed up for PayPixel back in 2020 that I never got you your registration sticker. Um, my bad. Oh my God. Our drone is now <laughs> legal to <Scadio>. fly. <laughs> it's so wow. funny. Our legal our, in Florida. Our drone is now legal to fly in Florida. Right there. Oh my so, God. We're good. <laughs> is is it, what good. is Flo why why Florida is just is Florida worse than the other? Oh, I'll get into that one second. Oh, oh man. It's going to be a long episode. It's getting hot in here, guys. So I missed some of it. You said why Florida? It is. is that what you said? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's getting so hot. Oh, God. <laughs> so, why, yeah, why, why Florida? Why Florida? Okay. So it started in Florida, and they were hoping for a waterfall effect. Like, So Skydio hired three lobbyists in Florida... It may have been more. I don't know. I know about three um, to push drone regulation through. And part of some of the regulation was literally banning aircrafts based on where they were made. Um, I.e. you can't buy Chinese drones if you're government. So they actually fed it into a bill that was actually passed in the middle of the night with a whole bunch of other bullshit. Um, you know, the political way that people work things. Um and long story short, those lobbyists pushed and pushed and pushed and shit got passed. Um, so now government agencies in Florida can't purchase DJI. They can't purchase Altel. Um, and it's to the point where they're not able to fly their DJI or Altel drones. So fuck all if you bought, you know, two dragonfishes and four M30Ts in Florida. You can't fly them if you're a public agency. To take it a step further, then they then hired lobbyists Texas. They hired three in Texas that I know of. Um, could be more. Um, and there's a whole list of states. I've had too much bourbon to remember them all. But Skydio is literally going state by state by state, paying lobbyists to lobby against Chinese manufactured aircrafts. Um, and then to take it a step further, so the backlash on that is like, oh, yeah, well, DJI hired lobbyists. Thankfully, we have someone in our corner, Brennan Schulman, that was the one pushing the lobbyists for DJI. And it wasn't lobbying against other manufacturers. It was lobbying against dumb fucking regulation. Um, and he has all of the paperwork, all of the everything that's been written on everything that DJI tried to lobby against. It was like, no, don't make that stupid fucking regulation to tell people they can't. They lobbied to, like, let people fly drones. Skydio is lobbying to ban Chinese drones. And I work for a Chinese guy, so I have a big stake in this. Just saying. Yee howdy. 
okay okay so let me ask you um i'm the, i'm i'm i don't know what's going on like you guys do in and the that's sad because you live in florida you should know not saying that's sad against you because no they literally it is pa- it, no. they pass it in the middle of the night no one knows it's no it's it's mostly me because i'm under a rock I, I I'm, I'm not so is everyone me. in Florida. It's cool. Well, I mean, if there's any sort of takeaway from this podcast, it's uh, to quote Bobby Quinn: "Screw public safety." <laughs> what? No, I didn't. Uh, yeah, no. it's uh, I got that on video. It's like <laughs> no, thirty minutes back. So, in in his defense, <laughs> let's let's be real. No, I hey, said I said the police are doing their thing. The first Bobby, responders are doing their thing. Let me defend Nobody's... you here. Any Thank disaster you. as big as a hurricane. And I know I've worked a lot of them. Tornadoes the same. LE, fire, EMS, they have so much shit going on at that moment. They don't have time. I've, I've been there. I've been on the fire truck when there's 30 calls and 10 fire trucks. They don't have time to hit every house. And I think that's what, what Wish.com Bobby was getting at earlier was was <laughs> like when he said Ooh. when he said like they're brushing off residents, it's not that they're brushing him off but i knew exactly what he meant he didn't mean it that way it was more of they don't have time to check on if somebody's roof is damaged they don't yo they don't and and so you know how it is man it's a sentry system there's command and control and that's the first thing and the eoc and the ic the incident commander and the emergency operations center um they they have to control who is in and out of there especially when you have usar or urban search and rescue teams in and out because it's a very um, gradual, uh, methodical, door to door. They're they're painting the doors. They're making sure that they go door to door to make sure everyone's okay. And if you have a ton of people coming in and out and in and out, and that's what civilians do, um, that's really difficult. That's really difficult. So we wanted to. I wanted to avoid those USAR teams and avoid all those checkpoints and stay away from them while also getting and exploiting that information, that data and getting it back out to the people in the, in, in the everywhere else and seeing their house. Um, and that's it. So my brain is going a hundred miles a minute. Um, obviously sky Brows, our main focus is public safety. That's, that's what we've been geared towards. That's what we focus on. That's, you know, that's our just that, that was the initial start of sky Brows. Um, what I'm thinking is, have you reached out to the law enforcement and the, cause we know they're stretched. We know they're, they're expanded. Have you reached out to them? Like, Hey, by the way, we have these maps. These are the people we have drone footage. We have pictures of these houses. Like your shit's okay over here. You might get 10,000 911 calls, but trust me, they're missing a fucking shingle. But over here, these houses are fucking leveled and we have the pictures and documentation to prove it. Like you might want to pay attention over here. Have you, have you, have you looked into that or? So we actually added our, our imagery to a feature service on Esri, which is public and available. So you can just pull it in. And we reached out to the EOC, and they're like, you know, ghost, <laughs> big time. Yeah. Uh, however, the Northport police commander, shout out to you, sir. I don't remember your name. I'm sorry. Um, but you added me on Twitter, and I started seeing that you're flying a drone <laughs> for fun. Yeah. Um, and so the Northport police commander knows. He knows what's up. He knows but, what's up. So Yeah, I mean, I see that being super helpful to public safety. Um Getting them to pay attention, I get it, is fucking damn near impossible. I worked for the fire department for 15 years. It took me five or six to get drones even considered. Um, now the program's flourishing, but it took literally a burning truck of chlorine to to get brains going. Like, oh, maybe the drone thing is a good idea. Um, but all it takes, I think, is one person from the police department or from, like, the dude on Twitter, the dude that you just made friends with on Twitter. I think it takes one of those people to actually see, oh, yeah, there's a map that actually has pictures of shit that's going on. Like, might be a good idea to to look at that so we know what we're getting into. Do you guys, you guys know David Merrick? Oh, God, yeah. So. Great guy. Honestly, I love David Merrick, but I know where you're going. Why would you preface it with honestly? Because. Yeah, listen, right. So David Merrick, Florida State University, um, emergency management background, like huge in the drone space with emergency management stuff. Um, I've personally reached out and called him every time I have. He's given me the exact information that I need to know for what it is I'm trying to do. 
that being said, there is a this is my sandbox and you are not <clears throat> part of that sandbox, so you stay over there because we already have enough of a clusterfuck, so stay over there. Stay behind the tape. Is that where you're going with this? No, I was actually thinking that he would be an amazing liaison to the effort in unifying commercialization. And and I think he feels it too. I, I have talked to him, but I don't want to I don't want to David is be. brilliant. And, and I and I feel like when you're when you're identifying people in the here and now in the current space, you have to realize who the players are. He is a great liaison to the external, to academia, to commercialization, to public safety and government. He's really right at the center of that all. And I feel like he might be a component to make things better. So so David, Merrick, not only do I have a LinkedIn message to you. We've been going back and forth dude. Um, right now, currently. He's uh, been but... uber helpful to me. I've heard several stories from other people where he was like, no, sorry, you go. You go now. Me here, you go now. Um, I've heard a lot of those stories, but for me, he's always been fucking amazing whenever I need anything. Yeah, we have a, we have a good mutual friend who's my best friend. I was his best man at his wedding. Um, you know, so there's some vetting there on both sides of the house. I, I would love to work with him a little bit more. I'm, I would love to jump in that program and, and see if there's anything that we can do. One thing I did mention to him, I called him on the phone and we talked. Um, and it was the, the idea that government can solve a problem, but not really well. But a good commercial product can really solve a problem really well. And they have a lot of momentum outside of the government space. So if there's a problem in the government, say with um, maps and unification and bringing some bringing data all to one location, um, I feel like that's best served with a commercial product. I agree. The tough part is getting the government agencies and the government as a whole to adopt that commercial product. I guess it's even harder when you have DJI drones collecting your data. For sure. For sure. Sure. But yeah. And so like, the thing with governments is, well, I'll, I'll just touch on it real, real quick. With governments is you're going there for a job. We discussed this. It's you go there for the nine to five and then you go back to your family and kids. Right. But for startups and other companies looking to make it or break it, this is the livelihoods of us and in our future right there. We have a lot to risk. That's why we're we have a lot on, on the line. So that's why we're willing to risk it all including going into a hurricane, just just willy-nilly to get footage, right? So yeah. oh, absolutely. that's the complete difference between government and startup. We're able to innovate way quicker. We're able to create our own culture, our own mission statements, our own vision, the way we want to lead the ship, captain this boat, and move forward, whereas government is just the way that the status quo has always been. We're going to stay that way. 99.9% .9 of government is CYA. That's what they're worried about. They're worried about covering their own ass. And sadly, that's 100% truth. 100%. Um, but the David Merrick, so Russell, Russell will tell you, he went and flew so, mapping so, missions. By the, way, with, by the way, I have to say sorry, David, for dragging your name into this. No, this fuck is that. Not David, a conversation David, David loves us. Um, we actually mentioned Darren Goodbar. That was the first time that I ever met David was at PVCC in middle of nowhere fucktard virginia um but david was dude he's he's so knowledgeable he's so but i get it when shit hits the fan it's like you go we got this oh actually there was a bunch of volunteers that i actually heard that from that that went down to florida to try and do some good very similar to what you what you were doing while they were down there um and they ran into david now Honestly, it may not have been David. There was some other people there. Um, mm -hmm. I know Justin Adams was air boss at the time. Um, and some people may have received some flack for trying to help. But, but yeah, as far as David, oh, man, he's, he's brilliant. Um, there's actually a really good conference that you should hit up in Ocala. Um, oh. Damn. I'm assuming they're going to do it again. Florida State University put on a, a public safety conference in Ocala, Florida, um, and David was there, dude, playing Airboss. He's 
he knows his shit. Um, but yeah, I got, you know, I met him back in 2016. I've picked his brain a thousand times since then. Hell, when Gatlinburg was all on fire, I called David Merrick. I'm like, Hey, uh, I'm kind of clueless at this point. What do I need to do to fly drones there? I know they're doing all this helicopter shit. I don't know anything. Help me out. Um, and he was actually able to give me the phone numbers of here's the person on the TFR, call him and figure it out. Here's the person for this, call him and figure it out. Um, even to the point where it was, if you can't figure it out, call me. I know the helicopter pilots that are flying there and they'll help you figure it out. Um, so a oh, huge wealth of knowledge. You're not dragging him into this by any means. Like we drag people in all the time. Um, but no, David Merrick is a great freaking resource. Russell Stormpoint, he spent freaking days with david sitting in a trailer mapping stuff um i don't remember what hurricane it was but just mapping shit with david non-stop so I was all day every day for the uh the plane crash at dallas executive and we we're doing some mapping over there and i ended up this, going to this the, last uh, one bobby yeah just a few, couple days oh, ago oh that yeah. sucks okay so we did we did maps oh, the, the plane crash area for um for ntsb and dallas police and uh, FA and all the other uh, stakeholders and when we ended up going into the command trailer the emergency manager there for Dallas County just knew everything like I was just sitting there like flying on the wall just uh, showing like hey look you know here's the 3D models but whenever anyone asked him any sort of question he would just point out a board full of phone numbers and be like call this number call that number and he would just like direct everybody everywhere yeah. it's crazy how their minds work it's insane yep it is Dude. absolutely insane how much stuff they can manage in one little brain. <laughs> Big brain. No, no, the br- little brain. <laughs> yeah. But they they yeah. manage. You call him, a ton you call him of Dave shit. Merrick, little brain? No, fuck that, dude. He is a big brain. Dude, he has been able Biggest. to answer some. He's like Greg. He can answer questions that nobody else knows the answer to. Um, actually, in all seriousness, Storm Points, SOGs, and SOPs. They're all based off of Florida State University's SOPs. Um, all of our standard operating procedures for when we show up to an incident is we took Florida State's, we ma- manipulated it and adapted it to fit Tennessee's framework, and all of our shit's based on, I mean, he's he knows. He knows his shit, for sure. So talking about good volunteers on, going to do good and getting shit on. Um, what? What? 100 mile an hour tornado came through Kentucky and we had a product called Life Seeker that literally finds cell phones middle of nowhere like how good would that be in a hurricane right it'll find any cell phone anywhere doesn't matter um but we got a call Stormpoint got a call to show up and fly Life Seeker it was the emergency operations center there that called us up we went there to go fly and we got shit on by the national guard when we showed up the federal government literally said "Mm, no we're not flying drones we're like no we have the capability to do this this and we were called by the eoc we were called by the they're like yeah no we're not flying drones back to your negative stigma on drones we were invited there to come fly something that we were the only one in the u.s we were the only ones that had it um canada has it spain has it the fcc has not passed it yet in the u.s Um, But a tool to do a job, and literally, National Guard is like, no, nobody's flying drones. No. 70 people buried in rubble. At least that's what they thought at the time. They had a candle factory that imploded while people were working, and they were like, yeah, no, you're not flying. We're like, but we can find cell phones. They're like, yeah, no, cool, not flying. And then the news, Phantom 4s are flying back and forth all over the place. (laughs) Oh, man. So oh, I, I spent 13 years in the military, and people ask why I didn't do the full 20. No. Oh. Wait, real quick. Tyler Mays just posted. He was actually with me in Mayfield a minute ago. said, don't forget the news station that was up there mere minutes after we were told that told no with a phantom. Flying the drone? Yeah. Yep. Dude, so that it all goes back to... The, the stigma and like what we all have a responsibility for leaders leaders right now today whether it's greg ken bobby uh drone jesus <laughs> i'll never call it john anything do, else do you know where he got that name where ask him is it from you ask him we'll, we'll save that for another podcast but you can ask him 
He'll tell I you. Love how egos. His I love John. Growing. My head's my head's getting growing. bigger as we speak. It's cool. Is it? Did you call him John? Did you call him John Jesus? Is there it is a you? there is a long story about that. So we will save it for another podcast. But okay, I fair. may have been the person that gave him that name. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, you know it's a, it's a good name too. But like we we all have a responsibility. I think it, it in, inherently to push the cause with the public, and and I think we should focus on that. That's that, that's mm-hmm. just my opinion. But if, if there's any opportunity that we can focus uh, startups or small business or enterprise or even government pushing to get in front of the in front of the public at any chance that we can with drones for good, it's going to help alleviate the friction for all of us for for SkyBrowse for PayPixel for DroneUp uh, for DroneBase for all of us and and we're all you know we're all in it for for something. I, I think that collectively we can do we can do a lot for the industry if we come together and we do that. That's all. That's it. Drones I, for a good I agree. Hashtag. I agree. By the way, so, and, I, and, and I have to say I have to say this before I'm done. Do you guys know who John and Martha King are? If you don't, it's a tragedy. It sounds you know very from familiar. From the but... uh, King family vineyard for going no, going back to the part sixty one. Go, I have to, so oh, I'm, no. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring manned aviation into this. That's where we stem from. John and Martha King, they are absolute legends. They're old educators. They do instructional videos, King, uh, King training videos from like way back in the day, VHS tapes, I and they're think, like super I, archaic. I think I know who you're talking about. Martha King, what? you sexy lady, curly hair. I was gonna say that Greg. Reverdio is the. That's new... how I know who it is. Mm-hmm. Greg, if you're watching this still, I don't know if anybody's watching, but Greg, dude, you're taking over for John and Martha King, and and I love it, and the whole industry knows it. Uh, that's all. That's all I wanted to say. I love it. Absolutely love it. Yeah. So that's that's the only place that I've actually heard that name was King was was hanging out with Greg. Shout out to Greg. We should we should just get him in like just like phone an expert kind of like uh, who wants to be a millionaire? Whatever, oh, dude, like, he, if there's any sort of FA question, just phone Greg. Just he is one hundred percent my phone up. a friend. Yeah, like no, it's not just FAA stuff. Like his whole persona, his whole everything. I'm like, Greg, I just got this really stupid fucking email. What <laughs> do I say to them? Just I don't want to tell them they're that stupid how do I respond to this email? And he's like, oh, yeah, no, just positivity. Treat them with positivity and, <laughs> like, that's, that's be as nice it. as you can possibly be. It's like, okay. Email sent. Like, dude, everything. Life, my life's goal is Lego. Greg, what Lego set should I buy next? Dude, everything. He, he I recently my, saw, like, he his He's Lego my phone sets. friend. His Lego set's pretty legit, man. Oh, you have no idea. So Greg and I converse a bunch about Lego. I have a small small obsession about Lego. I had to put a rider on my house to ensure my Lego collection. I'm going um, to Legoland next week. Dude, I love that place. My kids love that place. I love everything. I'm, I'm a fucking nerd. There's a Lego set back there. That's the only Lego set in this room. Um, but I've actually thought about putting all of my Lego buildings around my office just because it's such a good atmosphere. Dude, Lego. But no, <laughs> seriously, I call Greg for stupid random shit. He's so helpful, and he's one of those people that is positively influencing everything. It's great. Absolutely fucking love it. I don't understand how he's doing so well off of positivity because it's it's proven that negativity sells. Like That, that is leadership and and the one thing and 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 i'll say this the drone sphere the whole aerodrome if you will of of this industry lacks leadership and it goes back to the guys that are leading this have clout they do and 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 you see it there are very few leaders that are in it for the whole and they make themselves very aware, and I feel like there's a lot of those right now. They're they're circulating. I will say yes. Ken Dono. I will say Ken Dono. S- fuck it, dude. He's, I love Ken. He, he's and and he's he's helping me for nothing. Bobby helping me for nothing because we see each other and we see our goals. 
but but Greg educating educating is so important. He's educating people. He's educating the public. He's educating everybody. He's making it affordable to do so. Ninety nine dollars to get your one hundred seven get ready. Like he's smashing the competition Absolutely. out there. Absolutely but, smashing it. And, and and I love him. I love him. I, it, I, I feel like we're in a really good place in the drone industry. I feel like we're in a really good place with, with leaders in the right positions to, um, to, to really make this industry move forward. I'm excited and I'm drunk, officially. Hey, fuck yeah! Cheers. Cheers. Fuck Cheers. yeah! Fuck Paul Rossi. Fuck. Hey, Paul Rossi, if you're listening, give us the fucking shit so we can put the shit on the shit with the shit with the shit. Paul Rossi, you're I still worst. don't know who you are, but. Fuck you. He's the worst. <laughs> We're just gonna. All right. That's that's our that's that's the rule number three of drones after dark. <laughs> the guest has to say fuck fuck, fuck Paul Rossi. At least until we get the the. <laughs> oh man. Those oh are... man. Oh, just every it's... single time we do it, we just we just get every one of our viewers to tag him in the comments. My <laughs> heart is so full with positivity right now. Even when I say <laughs> fuck Paul Rossi, it's still overflowing. Oh. Thank you, Greg. <laughs> We've learned so much from you, Greg. <laughs> uh, thank you guys for having me tonight. I I appreciate it. I don't know if I sabotage your show or not, but uh... no, hell no. We sabotage our own church. <laughs> yeah. No, we're, well, we're great me... at sabotaging ourselves. So there's that. You made me feel really bad because I'm like, I see you, FAA. I see what you're doing. <laughs> Fuck you. And you're like, Greg is such a positive guy. He approached everything with neg- with positivity, and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> we're assholes. <laughs> That's oh, you know, Greg, man. Greg, Greg embodies leadership, and I am a scumbag. No, let's be honest. Behind the closed doors, Greg says, "Fuck that person." We'll never know who those people are, though, because everybody loves Greg so much that we can't get negativity out of him. But I yeah. hunted forever. I tried forever. But the, okay, so now that I'm drunk, I can I can say this, <laughs> Bobby. Bobby, what the fuck, man? So uh, so I just I won't throw what? him out there because I don't know how private he is. But I just recently met with a investor randomly in Boston, and, it, and he's a, he's a founder too. He comes from you know the startup grind, but he knows you. He knows me, and he was like, Bobby was telling me he's like, man, yeah, he knows you, and and, and so Bobby's story about you. Is that you came up to him in the first few minutes and you're like, "Hey, I'm the founder of PayPixel, and I want you to invest in me." <laughs> and I was like, "That's literally not what happened." I, we were at Top Golf to set the record straight. I love Top Golf. <laughs> to oh, set the man. record straight, man, oh, so, man. We were, so we were, so we were, roasted me. And we were at Top Golf, and I and I went up to you, and I'm I'm super um, antisocial. I am. I, I'm a, I'm a nerd at the core. I don't know how to communicate with people. And I was like, I'm like, Oh, I'm meeting big people. I'm meeting Bobby from Skybrows. And I was like, Bobby, I'm a big fan. I want to partner with you. And you're like, fuck you. I don't know you. That never happened. <laughs> no, that oh, never, no, man. it didn't happen. No, that was a very short paraphrase for me, <laughs> but I didn't ask you to invest. And, and, and so he met me, um, partner partner and partner. and so he met me at a bar uh this 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 guy who mutually knows us and uh he's like yeah man bobby bobby threw you out man he's like right off the bat you said you wanted you wanted him to invest in your company i was like it didn't happen so partner some of the partner. details got a little muddled muddled dude i love it i will say dude, this though dude i talk I, shit I'm, about him i want to hear it like Let's get it no. out there. Fuck it. No, right. man. No, <laughs> no. The roast of the podcast. To, no, no. To, 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 to close that up. So I, I saw, like, I had a vision. I know what PayPixel is supposed to be. Nobody knows it. Nobody, nobody has an idea what PayPixel is going to be. Like, I, I, my vision, I want to bring it to fruition. It's a really cool thing. And I was like, hey, Bobby, you know, I, I really think that Skybrows and, and 3D models and building 3d models would be awesome to to incorporate with us we're doing this you guys are doing this let's work together and bobby is like dude who are you nice to meet you 
And so I messed all right, up. All right. So, okay, but, so hey, let's the, be honest. The context is that we're all there after a long day of conferencing, two long days yeah. of conferencing, and we're trying to relax and not talk shop. So it's no. what? Dobo, oh, dude. the Autel guys. Dude, once cigars some... come out or once bourbon comes out, yeah, don't talk sky brows. We don't want to. Yeah. yeah, we were boozing. So, we were boozing. Oh, hard no, 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 no. Tell... Pilot Institute was there as well, and we were just having a good time smacking tell... golf balls and just bullshitting. Yeah, like, no, no, and then, no business and, talk. And, and then Nobody me, and then me, I come in, <laughs> I come in crashing, totally awkward, and and ruined it. Um, but I, I will say that you know over time, uh, Bobby turned around and he's like he he didn't hate me so much after that, and I appreciate that. Um, and and so thank you. Well, no, I I saw it. Yeah, yeah, I saw a lot of myself in you in the early days. I used to do that as well, just straight business, business, business all the time. Just pitch, pitch, pitch. It doesn't matter like what the context is. I'm looking to just get the name out and do whatever it takes to get the name out. And it it works in the early days to get the name out. Like like you said, negativity sells. But right now, you know, once you grow a little bit more, it got to be more tactful about it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. If I had a dollar for every email that I had that said, hey, we're the next big thing. Please, let's integrate. <laughs> Biz dad. That's what he has like, to deal with. All no, the, but in all, all seriousness. The companies that want to work with us. L- let's be serious. You are the next big thing. Like, there's 50 of you that want to be the next big thing. And we get all of them. <laughs> not that, not that Skybrows is that big or that, but we're we're a startup and we are growing stupid fast. And let's be honest, it's fast. It, I don't really want to dive too much into what Skybrows is and so on and so forth. But if I could count on both, I can't on both hands, both feet, the emails that I get daily, like, oh, let's integrate. Let's, oh, I'm the, I'm the next. It's tough to filter those out. Um, it really is. And there, there's the occasional, like, hell, did did you hear how I met Greg? Last show, we were talking about how I met Greg. I basically said, fuck you to Greg on Facebook. Like, I heard you're doing this. You're just another fucking, another fucking training people that charging people stupid money to do stupid shit. Like, get back in your box. Like, I laid into Greg. And Greg did the typical Greg thing. Oh, I really, really appreciate your input. Like so positive, so positive, He's dude. So positive. He was so positive, so he just, positive. He just makes you feel like an and, asshole. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I kind of turtled up a little bit and put my shell over and like. Maybe he really is trying to do what he says he's going to do, but this is the same thing. I mean, you know, Bobby may have had that. Like, oh, that's cool, but probably. It, I'm assuming Bobby had heard 12 times that day, like, oh, this is how we want to, we're going to make you rich with this idea. It's like, that's cool. But it is good to hear that some of those stories turn into fucking Paypixel. Exactly. Yeah. Nice. So, so in that, in that drunken um, ramble that I, I had there, I just, I just wanted to say like, dude, I appreciate you so much, Bobby, for, one being able to take that initial conversation and and brush it off and like you give me a mulligan on it you know it was it was super awkward but i have really appreciated the times that we've talked after um you know and, and come together you are in your you're going in in a direction over here we're going in a direction over here and i think that together we can we can cover a lot of ground um you know we're not building a 3d modeling software we're not building that but we want to build a a platform for pilots to be able to deliver their images videos 3d models and videos uh, or or mapping imagery sorry and and i and i I feel like that's a nice fit right so the the fact that you were able to overlook that little awkwardness in the beginning says a lot about you um and i've and i've grown to be a friend with you over the last uh, several months over the last year. I, how long has it been? It, it feels like three months from that top golf night. But as a person, man, I just want to thank you. Like, it, it means a lot that uh, that you're you're willing to, you know, 
be real and, and see where we're at in our struggle and come in and help us and talk to me and, and get to the friend level with me and, and, you know, invite me on stuff like this tonight. Yeah. We're, we're, yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're uh, early stage and, and you're paying it back then. Yeah. You're paying yep. it forward, man. And I see it and, and I appreciate it a lot. And I look forward to doing the same thing in the future What's, with other Where's the roast? Uh, where's the roast in this? I'm where's the punchline? That's it, dude. I, I appreciate it? you, man. I, Aww. yeah. That's it. I, I I love you guys. Thank you. Aww. Love dude, you there has to if you're drinking if you're drinking bourbon, there has to be an I love you guys at one point. So Dude, we've got a lot four, in common. 4. I, I look forward to filter. I look forward to building more of a friendship with you. I mean, what you're doing is obviously freaking your heart is in the right place. You're you're business driven. I mean Mm. I wish I wish great things for you, and you know what? You drink good bourbon, so there's that. We we got to hang out in person. So I do I do. If if anybody's even listening anymore, one one last thing. If you fucking have any negative input about PayPixel, please please let me know. Dish Let's it. Let's fix it. Yeah, let, yeah, let we'll me know. Fix like, it. Hurt we'll my fix feelings. It at the Bang Bros Stadium together. <laughs> at the Bang Bros Stadium. <laughs> you and me in a we'll bang it out. Craig. We'll, we'll bang it out. Stadium. Dang, how big is that bottle? Either you have massive hands or it's a tiny bottle. For the record, I, I'm halfway through a bottle of, of Woodford. Damn, you have some. Is that a 750? It's a 750. Yeah, you got some big hands. 750. Yeah, you know what else is big? <laughs> we wouldn't know because you only got three quarters naked today. Like, I know your pants are gone. I know your boxers are gone, but you kept the shirt on, so. Nobody wants That's us. Right. We're there. Stand up. <laughs> Stand up. <laughs> the podcast. Don't, <laughs> okay. don't, don't do it. Let's go. Here we go. Here we go. Bobby thought I was going to do it. Invest, investments either just went out the window or they tripled. I don't oh, know which, dude, I, I closed I, my eyes, so I don't know. I lost my pre-seed round investors 40 minutes ago when I said, fuck the FAA. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, shit. Sorry, Dave. Sorry, Kevin. Sorry, nah, good people. Hey, Did man. You wire the money already? That's what matters. No. <laughs> you should have joined the podcast later. Why did you say I yes? Know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's all good. Damn. Well, but honestly, Bobby Quinn, ladies and gentlemen, Bobby Quinn. he is currently raising his pre seed round. He's looking for capital to fund Let's his be honest, endeavors with his not, mission. Not no. seed like seed, but seed like. Ooh. Seed. Yes. seed to to the sec for a legal disclaimer i did not use that opportunity to broadcast out to the nation my race um that was somebody else um and i did not ask for anybody to come and invest in my company no hell no however he's open for investments minimum but let's be honest you're stupid if like you don't invest thousand give him some money because look he's gonna do some great things big oh. roi Big Damn, Tam, man. great go to market, great team. Thanks, Big guys. names Shout dropping in Quinn. chat right when we're ending. Damn it, man! Who's the Bobby big Quinn? Name? Big Jared. Jared Janicek. Yeah, buddy. He said, oh, "Sup, dudes." What's Jeff looks way comfortable. too comfortable. Jared, I'm halfway through a bottle of Woodford. I mean, what else do you expect, brother? But, uh, we just got started. Game on, Jared. Uh, I can <laughs> oh, always, God. I can always call Jared. If I if I'm gonna get the real feedback, like you're fucking terrible. This is a terrible approach. I hate you. That's See, what I we, call Jared. And we I wouldn't know because he's so hung up on drone deploy that he won't give us real feedback at Skybrows because he won't even try it. Just throwing that out there, Jared. I love you. I don't get it. I heard we're doing PCPs <laughs> pretty soon. What happened there? Mm-hmm. Oh, ground control points in Skybrows. Oh, what? Why? What? Why? Why I would mean, I didn't Bobby that? say that Crazy. PCPs are useless? I don't know. He said, I'm looking forward to a new chair. Can I have Jeff's? Dude, I love my chair. I was actually just talking about getting a new one. But hey, we'll save it for another cast. We can't we can't go all night, brother. It's not my fault. <laughs> he said fuck try to play. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> how much Jared, how much is a, a monthly individual advanced? I heard they went up to five ninety nine a month or some stupid shit, but we're That's digressing. Easy. We, um, we got so to on. Show. How much? We uh, hey, bef- <laughs> hey, Jared, uh, answer your Facebook messenger about that. 
he said i'll jump in next time we have to have jared on the show listen oh boy last time i hung up i love jared dude he is he's cut dry like this is how it is um but last time i sat with him he had a i map shit t-shirt on and i was like oh that's cool so and he do also I. had a lot of green tee shots as well oh yeah dude we'll we'll have we'll have jared on for sure for sure jared yeah. I greatly appreciate your input. By the way, that's how some other people brush people off. But me, I really do appreciate your input. Um, and wish.com Bobby does as well. <laughs> All right. Uh, and that concludes it. Drones, Drones After, After Dark, Dark, episode three. Check us out next week. We'll do a Thanksgiving special with, I don't know, because we invite the guests the day we're doing the shoot. So I don't know. We'll figure it out. It's all <laughs> I'm unscripted you, all unscripted un- yeah. last minute all of that wing it we'll get there that's how you guys. get real people thanks guys thanks right. bobby appreciate and you we are oh, oh!